Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for lunch. I'm Lisa Callahan with Lockheed Martin, and it's my honor today to introduce a European commissioner, Elzbeta Benkoskov. Elzbeta is the European commissioner for internal market, industry entrepreneurship, and SMEs. As commissioner, her responsibilities include reviewing the strategy for completing a single market of goods and services, including extending the list of products to be recognized in all EU countries, and eliminating remaining obstacles. She's also responsible for maintaining and reinforcing a strong, high-performing industrial base for internal markets and stimulating investments in new technologies improving the business environment, and easing access to markets and to finance. Prior to this, she was the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure and Development, and from 2007 to 2013, she was the Minister of Regional Development of Poland. Isbelta is a postgraduate diploma from the Polish National School of uh, Public Administration and a master's degree in Oriental Philology. She's a proud mother, and I understand that we have something in common in that she's an avid rock concert attendant. <laughs> please welcome Ms. Meta to the stage, please. This is a very precise information, really. So some of the space family that knows everything about my professional activities uh, since four years uh, as, a, as a European commissioner in space uh, sector now know that I'm a mother of three and rock fan. Yes, I am. Maybe I don't look like, <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Bon appétit to everybody. I, I just wanted to say a, you a few words, Senator, of course, and all of the honorable guests. Ah, I switch off Lockheed Martin, but okay. I do like this. Maybe it's better. Um, so uh, so uh, thank you very much for inviting me. I just uh, say, you, uh, say a few words, from, especially for, for our uh, guests from uh, outside, uh, outside Europe. This is important to, to show you um, how we feel about the, the European space sector, about the space sector itself, and give you a little bit of European perspective on our, on our activities. Um, uh, why us as a European Commission? Of course, the European Union and the European nations organize its work in, in the space sector si since uh, mid-70s, last, last century. But as a European Union, we as a European for, uh, Commission formally, although our, our programs are a little bit older, we formally um, got a role since tw 2009. So um, uh, that, that's why me, in, in a, as part of, the, part of my port portfolio, I have a space sector, very important part of my portfolio. And if somebody this one year before the end of the mandate asks me, which is the most important, most, most valuable, valuable also for me, part of this really huge portfolio, I always refer in the first top three topics, space sector, because this is really something which is growing extremely fast in Europe, uh, and where also we have some successes, a few words uh, on, the, on this uh, uh, later on. Uh, now we have accumulated budget of 7 billion euro a year, uh, and really we are a Europe, we are, uh, we are a space power in the world, second space power, but we are tending to be the first one, maybe not in this mandate, but in the nearest future. Uh, uh, we want, of course, to preserve to this position and strengthen it. Uh, we are delivering, and those of you who, who work with us uh, from, the, from the space industry know it very well, we are delivering, de delivering on clear priorities uh, and our space programs. Last June, the European Commission presented its, uh, our new we think it's ambitious proposal for the next um, uh, next multi-annual budget since after 2020 it will be uh, 16 billion euro space program but let me just in in two words uh, uh, mention our our um, achievement so far because i think uh, we don't, do not say it enough and we do not stress it enough uh, and we have every reason to be proud of what we achieved so far uh, either through European Space Agency programs such as Rosetta and many others or with the 
European Union space program, so Galileo in Copernicus. Um, those programs, Galileo and Galileo and Degnos and Copernicus, are really world class infrastructure. They are among the best system in respectively the Earth observation for the for the Copernicus and uh, satellite positioning for Galileo, and they are both of them. They are on time and on budget. And as uh, we started this mandate four years ago, it was quite a different story. So that's why we should really praise all of those people that, that really um, were cooperating with us and, and to, to, to get to the point where we are now. Uh, with Copernicus, as you uh, for sure know, we are monitor monitoring the Earth. Uh, the value of Copernicus is clearly recognized, uh, and the fact that so many countries want to have cooperation agreement with Copernicus is really, I think, the best proof of its attractiveness. With Galileo, we are building in cooperation with uh, GPS, the best system ever, uh, with a target precision, precision of around 20 cent centimeters, so this is really... Uh, I want to welcome Jean-Yves Legal, Good to have you with us. Uh, and uh, now um, uh, for Galileo, we have 26 uh, satellites in orbit. Um, uh, Galileo is establishing itself as, as a landmark, giving Europe really autonomous system of positioning. There are more than 400 million users of Galileo today around the world. 400 million. This is really a substantial number. Um, and of course, let me mention also uh, European space industry, which is a world-class one, be it in the launchers, in the satellites, in the space system, in the technologies used. So this is what we have now. Uh, uh, of course, we have to look uh, to the future, uh, because the space sector worldwide is really undergoing the, the massive and profound changes and evolution. And as for me, there are three main drivers of change, which are largely, largely common, to, common uh, worldwide. First, space has become uh, really truly important for the economy and society, well beyond the space sector itself. But this means that uh, the user is at the center of our interest. We should not invest in space, and I keep repeating this, for the sake of space, but with a very clear objective of answering new needs be the public or private. So while continuing investing in, in, in the infrastructure, which is um, a must, we need also focus on services and application delivering. Um, it is natural, uh, again, the, the second point, that, that um, uh, space is the enabler of security and, and defense. So, uh, so this is natural that our activities and our um, proposals for the new European Defence Fund um, is also the right vector, vector to complement actions in our, in our space policy. And the third point, uh, the role, of course, of the private sector. So, majority of you here. The private sector is really becoming an initiator of space project. And as always, I'm not saying that the private can, can or should replace uh, public programmes but we definitely need to work much more hand in hand. The public investment, and that's why we are fighting, I was fighting for this big uh, EU budget for the, for the next MFF. The public investment will remain important, and the best proof, uh, again, is our proposal of, the, of this increased budget, but we need to have this deep reflection also in Europe on, this, on, on, on our, our contact and on public-private financing. Uh, in, uh, let me also mention that in uh, October 2016, we presented a space strategy for Europe. There we set a vision, we set ambitious, but then in June this year, not but, then in June this year, uh, we pre pre presented a 16 billion EU space program. Uh, this is about really future of the European space policy. And for the next seven years, uh, our proposed roadmap is very clear. So the continuity, evolution and adaptation. Um, first objective, of course, to maintain and upgrade the existing infrastructures for all of the programs, Galileo and Degnos and Copernicus. Um, uh, we will invest in Galileo almost 10, 9.7 billion euros to complete the infrastructure, uh, maintain it and prepare for the second generation of the system. For Copernicus, we are, we are proposing almost 6 billion euros. Um, 
our objective is really to maintain EU's autonomous capacity to observe the, uh, the Earth and uh, to position Copernicus in support to Europe's security first and to Europe's leadership to fight climate change. So these are the, really the, the, our top goals for, for Copernicus for the, for the future. The second priority is to make sure that the European space sector adapts to new realities. Uh, so in that perspective, again, a link to security, a link to defense, space is and should be promoted as an enabler of security. Uh, for this, we want to progressively launch two new initiatives with a budget of half billion euros. So the SSA, Space Situation Awareness, and GovSatcom, so Governmental Satellite Communication. Um, additionally, uh, there is, of course, no European space policy without autonomous access to space. Again, my standing quote. Um, so with the EU space programs, we propose to aggregate the EU demand for launchers, prov providing both long-term visibility, but also uh, economic viability to future European launchers. For example, Ariane 6, Vega C. Uh, we will also have the possibility to support the uh, adaptation of the ground infrastructure. And one small thing, but I think I I interesting, maybe, uh, through Horizon Europe, so the success of Horizon 2020, uh, we hope to be able to launch a space G JTIs, which is especially focused on the disruptive technologies in the launcher sector. And the third new Im element, of course, the promotion of the European new space approach. So there is, uh, we need to change really the mindset of the space sector and support the scale up of our space startups in Europe, uh, where it's also visible here how many of, the, of them are emerging all, almost every, every day. Uh, and this is true for all the segments of the space value chain from satellite launch, satellites to launchers uh, up to the new ser services and of course data hand handling. Uh, finally, slight adjustment of our governance to make the decision making more efficient and more reactive to the ongoing changes. So uh, let me conclude by saying that as you can see, us, European Commission, but also me personally, uh, we are very committed on space. Uh, in a sense, we are pushing for really genuine European space industrial strategy through our largely, uh, large publicly funded programs. Uh, with Galileo Copernicus, it is, it is really European Union at its best. These are industrial projects that not single European member states could have done alone. Ensuring Europe's technological independence and therefore sovereignty, uh, be it economic, geopolitical, political, or security and defense. But at the same time, uh, and as we are here in the, in the international much more than European uh, cooperation. Um, uh, we also know in Europe that the basis for space is cooperation. Uh, and of course, European uh, cooperation at the European level, but, but also much beyond. Galileo is really designed to work with GPS. Copernicus is integrated, integrated contributing missions from all over the world. I need to underline this. Ariane Group is a world leader in the, in the international com commercial launcher market. Our satellites manufacturers are exp um, exporting their knowledge, their, both their knowledge and their expertise. Uh, so Europe, in Europe, we cherish this cooperation culture. This is our European DNA, and this is not empty words uh, that we, we really act on this. We intend, of course, to continue in that direction while of course, still, I have to again underline this, we need to think and preserve our own interest, but definitely the co cooperation is crucial and very, very basic word for us. Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak here in front of this international audience uh, and presenting you a little bit of, as I said at the beginning, European perspective for the space sector. Thank you very much.